अवज्ञान तिमृंद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरुन्मल ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम वंदेह श्री गुरुश्रीयुतपदकमलम श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्चरूप साग्रजात सह गण रघुनाथ सजीव साधत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पादा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौर कृषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तिशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअतराधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद से तन्वयादित्रत चार्थे सुखिज्ञस्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कव मूर तेज वारी मृदा यथा विनिम यत्रो मृषा धाम स्वयं सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमह नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत फोर्थ कैंटो सिक्स चैप्टर रीडिंग फ्रॉम वर्स नंबर ट्वेंटी डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दे वॉज हेडेड बाय ब्रह्म गोइंग टू कैलाश माउंटेन टू सी लॉर्ड शिव आफ्टर द सेक्रीफाइस ऑफ दक्ष वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय द सर्वेंट्स ऑफ लॉर्ड शिव सो वी रेड द होल डिस्क्रिप्शन हाउ they reached kalash mountain which was very beautiful full of very types of trees giving nice fruits and flowers so this is a good meditation for people who want to meditate on the word of lord shiva so in verse number 20 this is the present verse it describes now about the animals there it says mrigahi shakha mrigahi krodai mrigendrai riksha shalyakaihi gavayaihi sharabhai vyagrai rudhir mahishadivi so they saw there that there were very beautiful deer and the deer were wandering there and then there was shakhamrig shakhamrig means mrig means deer and shakhamrig means the deer of the branches 
They are called monkeys. <laughs> monkeys are called shakhamrit because you have seen that how the deers are jumping on the ground. They jump like that on the branches of the tree. So they are called shakhamrit. So they saw them <coughs> and There were Kroda. Kroda is the wild boar. And Mrigendra. Mrigendra is lion. And Riksha is uh, bear. And Shalleka is porcupine. And Gavaya is this blue cow. And Sharabha. There used to be one type of animal before in India. Now it is not found. And this animal was called Sharabha. It had eight legs. And it is supposed to be the it's supposed to be more powerful than the lion. Usually lion is considered as the king of the forest now, or king of animals. But before Sharabha was there, and he was superior to the lion, having eight legs. Now it's only in the description. And then there are Vyagra, Vyagra is tiger, and Rurubhi is one special type of deer, and buffaloes. So these are the types of animals which were living there in the forest. Karnantrakai padaswasyai nirjustam vikanavibhi kadali khandasam rudha nalani pulina shriyam so then there is further description that there is there are deers there which have this uh, musk. musk in their navel. So they were wandering there and beautiful smell coming from them. And there are also nice Karnantrakai ek padasvai nirjustam vikanavidhi kadali khanda. Very beautiful trees of banana. So, banana also grows there in the cold season. Hmm? This mask thing is a, is a gland or what? It's one type of so round thing which grows here in the naval area. Mm. And the mask that uh, people are using, what they do, they cut this thing? No, they take it out. They cut it? Mm. Yeah. So there was these bananas were growing at the bank of lakes. Samrudha Nalani Polina Sriyam. There are beautiful lakes there. And there is growing on near the water. And Pariyastam Nandaya Satya Snana Punya Tarodaya Vilokya Bhute Skirin Vyuda Vismayam Yayu. There is also the river called Nanda which was flowing there and this was the very clean and pious water because Sati Devi used to take bath in it and therefore it became more purified because of her touch. So when the Devas they saw this beauty of the mountain they were very much surprised. Because they are thinking that usually you go to mountain, it is not easy 
You have to walk on stones, there are thorns, thorny bushes and not very pleasant to walk around but they saw that it was very beautiful and very comfortable <coughs> nice fruits and flowers and animals so they all saw this dadrishu tatra te ramyam alakam nam vai purim vanam saugandhikam chapi yatra tanna pankajam and as they further moved they saw what is called the city of alaka this is the city of kuber alaka puri similar lives so it was very beautiful city right inside the mountain the town there and near to this is a forest which is called sogandhika forest sugandha means fragrance or nice fragrance and it is called sogandhika because there is a very special type of lotus which grows there and that lotus is also called sogandhika in mahabharata there is a story that once when pandavas were there then one day draupadi was near this river nandari river so also part of ganga and then she saw this very fragrant flower going in the water but she could not catch it so when bhima came the they had gone inside to get some fruits or roots for eating and then she told him that i want this flower so she was saying that you go and run behind it so bhima said that if this flower has come from up there must be some garden there so better i go up so then he started walking up and up and there also it is described that there was a forest of bananas and that's where he had met hanuman the story that hanuman was lying on the path he was an old monkey and his tail was on this path and he told him to move but he did not move and he said that okay, he you can pick my tail up because i'm too old and bhima was not able to pick the tail so then only he realized that this is some very special monkey and then hanuman revealed himself that he was hanuman so that's where bhima had met hanuman so after that he went up and he went to this sogandhika forest this was full of this very beautiful lotus flowers and he got these flowers from there so that is the one which is being described here नंदाचालक नंदाच सलित बाह्यता पुरा तीर्थ पाद पदोझ रजसाती पावने एंड देर आर टू रिवर्स आउट साइड द सिटी ऑफ अलका देर कॉल नंदा एंड अलक नंदा एंड दीज आर ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ गंगा बिकॉज इट्स एज तीर्थ पद पाद पदोझ रजसाती पावने देर वेरी होली बिकॉज दे हैव the contact of the feet of the lord and dust from the feet of the lord because when vamana dev was measuring the universe and his foot went up to brahma loka and brahma he did a shake of his feet and foot in only one and that's what became ganga So he took that water and put in his kamandu in his pot. So that's how Ganga was born from the feet of Lord Vishnu. So one of the name for Ganga is Vishnu Padi, or he comes from the feet of the Lord. So usually, everywhere in the world, dust is considered 
something to be avoided. It is only in India that dust has a special meaning. So here dust is very important. So it is said that this river is purifying because Padam Bhoja Rajasa it has the dust from the feet of the Lord. So nowhere people think that dust can purify, it's supposed to be considered as impure. But in Vedic culture, dust from the feet of Lord or a great holy man is considered as a blessing. Yayaho surastriya kshatar avrohiya swadhishanyatava kridanti punsa sinchantyo vigahiya ratikarshita so it is said that the wives of the devas who are living in the upper planetary systems, they come to the, these rivers from their own abode. And Kridanti Punsa Sinchanta Vigahiya Rati Karshita. When they are tired after enjoying with their husbands, they come here to relax and they take bath in these rivers while throwing water on their husbands. So this is also like their picnic place. Yayostat snana vibrashta vana navakumkuma pinjaram Vikrisha Pipi Bantyam Bhapayam Tovagadi says that when they are taking bath or dip inside these rivers, then the kumkum, this is that powder, this comes from, from the saffron, which they have applied on their body, then it gets mixed up in the water and it is very fragrant. So the elephants who are there, they drink this water although they are not thirsty because of the fragrance of this kumkum. And they also make the lady elephants drink this water. Tar hema maharatna vimana satsankulam jashtam punyajana sthi vir yathakam satadibhanam And the sky there is as if there is cloud and lightning because the sky is full of aeroplanes of residents of Alkapuri, the city which belongs to Kubera. So the associates of Kubera are called Purnyajana. And the aeroplanes are made of various different materials. Some are made from gold, some are made from silver, some are made from gems. So there are hundreds and hundreds of aeroplanes. Looks like everybody has one there. It's like in the West everyone has a car. So in this city everybody has a plane. Nobody has a car there. Because there are no roads. For cars you need road. And aeroplane you can fly. Anytime, anywhere. So they are all hanging in the sky. And because the planes are compared here to the cloud and the wives are compared to the lightning because they are very fair. So we say that it appeared as if Satadit Bhanam, that there is lightning and cloud in there. Itva Yakseshwar Purim Vanam Saugandikam Chatat Drumai Kamadugai Vishpirdhyam Chitramalya Falachadai So then they moved further from this city of Alkapuri, which is called Yakseshwar Puri. And they also crossed this forest 
called Sagantika, which has beautiful flowers. And then they went further down, going through the trees, which are Kamaduga or wistful filling trees. And they were very beautiful fruits and flowers and leaves making the whole thing look very colorful, chitra. So the whole scene is very pleasing. Like if somebody has made a nice painting. Rakta Kantha Swaraganika Swaramandita Shatpadam Kalahansakula Prashtam Karadanda Jalashayam. Then they saw that there were this uh, bird called Kukku. She was singing very beautifully. And then there were other birds which were chirping there. And there were bumblebees who were also making a beautiful sound. And then there were Kalahansa. Kula Prestam, a special type of swan which were around there, around the lakes and this was increasing the beauty of these lakes there these Kalahamsa, the royal swans Vana Kunjara Sangrishta Harichandana Vayuna Adi Punjana Strina Muhuran Matha Yen Mana. And there are forest elephants, wild elephants there. And these wild elephants, when they are wandering in the forest, then sometimes they feel like scratching their body. So they scratch their body with the trees, a special type of sandalwood tree which is called Harichandana. This Harichandana is so fragrant that if you put this to one part of your body, then whole body feels cool. So when they scratch their body with these trees, then because of that rubbing, the fragrance from the tree comes out. Like you take sandalwood, piece of sandalwood wood and you rub it on stone and the fragrance comes out. So like that the fragrance comes out in the air and this fragrance is so wonderful that the women of Alkapuri they become mad by this fragrance. Vaiduriya krita sopana vapya utpalamala nihi praptam kim purusha dishtva natara vatam the lakes there, they have stairs going down for drinking water or taking bath. And these stairs are made from Vaduriya Mani, this cat's eye, this type of gem. And there are various types of lotuses in the lake. And the Kimpurushas have come there for picnic. So the devas, they are seeing all this beauty and then they are walking further. So finally they see one big water vaksha, this banyan tree. And this banyan tree is very huge. Sayojan satot sedha padona vit payataha pariyam krita chalachayo nirnida stapa varjitaha. So the tree is 100 yojana high, one yojana is supposed to be 8 miles, so it is 800 miles high tree and the branches are spread up to 75 yojanas around it and it is very shady. So you can imagine it's like a big hall 
and 75 miles is quite a lot to spread its branches. So there is always shade under this tree, so you don't suffer from heat. Anyone who is sitting before you say that there is no trouble of heat there. And on this tree, there are no nests of any bird. No bird makes any nest on it. So that means there is no bird stool. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no need of sweeping under it. it stays clean. Tasmin maha yoga maye mumukshu sharne suraha dadrishu siva masinam tekta marsham ivantakam. So that's where they saw Lord Shiva. This is the tree under which Lord Shiva is sitting. And he appeared like Kala personified or time personified. So this snake which you see around Shiva's neck, it signifies things. The snakes they live on air. So it means that Shiva is a yogi. Yogis live on air. Perfected yogi. Our snake also signifies death. So it means that he is beyond death. Our snake also signifies time. Because sometimes you see paintings in which snake has his tail in his mouth. You have seen this type of painting. So what does it signify? It signifies endless time. Time has no beginning and no end or the beginning and end are meeting together, the tail and the mouth. So it signifies that Lord Shiva is beyond time. So that's why it's said here that Tasmin Maha Yoga Maye Mukshu Sarnesura that he is a great yogi and he is the shelter of those who want liberation. So the devas, they saw him sitting under the tree and he was completely peaceful. Tyakta dadrishu siva masinam tyakta amarsham ivantakam. So amarsha means anger and he was absolutely free from anger. So that is one thing mentioned about him or the first thing mentioned that he was not angry. Because devas are going there to pacify him and ask for forgiveness. So they were worried that he may be angry, in a very angry mood. Because what they saw at the sacrifice area, with that they are imagining now. How Shiva will be. But he was absolutely calm, serene and talking to the sages. So therefore it says, Tyakta Amarsam Iva Antakam. And he appeared as if he is personification of death. Because Lord Shiva is the one who destroys. Antakam means one who brings an end. So that's how they perceive him. Sanandanadhyayil Mahasiddhai Shantai Sashanta Vigraham Upashyamanam Sakhyacha Bhartra Guhyaka Rakshasam So, what did they see him? He was not sitting alone there. But he was surrounded by great perfected beings like Sanandana, the four Kumaras. They were present there. And Kubera, who is the master of Yakshas and Rakshas, so he was performing service to them. Shiva, Shiva was serving them? No, no. Yaksha. This uh, Kubera. Kubera was doing service to Lord Shiva. Kubera is supposed to be a friend of Shiva. But he to describe that he was doing service to Lord Shiva. And the Kumaras are considered elder brothers? 
Kumaras are the elder brothers, but they also give respect to him. Because she was <coughs> superior in power. So there is not much commentary on this. Kumaras says, Antkami Vaita Tasmin Kritasya Pradasya Smritya so he appeared like death because now they are why he, he is appearing like death to them because they have offended him so they are scared they, they are seeing Shiva in two ways that he is appearing without anger so he is appearing peaceful to his own people but to them, he is appearing like death. Because they themselves have the fear in their mind. So basically, according to their mood, they are seeing him. That's what it means. Otherwise, what was the sense of saying that he is not angry and then he is looking like death personified? So Kuber is mentioned here as his friend, Sakya means friend. So he is also there because he is his neighbor. Also these directions belong to them, the north and the northeast. Siva's direction is supposed to be northeast direction. Vidya tapo yoga patham astitam tamadhishwaram charantam vishwasuridam vatsalyat loka mangalam. So, how did they perceive him? They perceive him that he is the person who propagates the path of knowledge, austerities, and yoga. And he was situated there giving instructions. Friend of the whole universe, Suhida, and doing welfare to everybody out of compassion. And for the benefit of the society, he was sitting in this state of meditation. So this is how he appeared. Means he is a teacher who gives instructions to others and that's why even the great beings like Kumaras or the sages, they go to him. So he is called Adhishwara or Master. Vidyatapa Yoga Patham Astitam Tam Adhishwara Charantam Vishwasavidam Vatsalya Atlokam He has Vatsalya for everybody. Like a father sees the children and wants to do good to the children. Like that Lord Shiva, he looks one considers the welfare of everyone. That's why he drank the poison which came out from the churning of the ocean. Not that poison is something tasty or beneficial for the body, but only to protect the humanity. He drank that. So that's why he says, Vatsalyat Lokamangala. Lingam cha tap sabhistam bhasma danda jata jinam angena sandhya bhrucha chandra lekham cha vibhratam. So he is described his marks that he had the marks of a sannyasi or a renounced person, tapasvi, austere person. He had this bhasma or the ashes from the cremation ground smeared on his body. He has one stick, matted hair and this skin, he has skin around his waist and on the head he has the crescent moon. So these are the symbols. This is how he appeared. Upavishtam Darbhamayam Vrishyam Brahma Sanatanam Naradaya Pravochantam Prichate Shunvatam Satam 
So he was sitting there on a kusasana, this seat or mat made from kusha grass, a special type of grass which is considered as very pure. So he was sitting on that and the people, they were listening to him because Narada was there and Narada was asking him a question and he was replying to his question and giving instruction about Supreme Lord to the people present there. So this is how they saw him. This is how one can meditate on Shiva in this whole situation is meant for meditation. Kritvaro Dakshine Savyam Pada Padam Cha Jānuni Bahum Prakoshthe Akshamalam Asinam Tarka Mudraya So how he appeared that his left foot was kept on his right thigh and he has kept his left hand on the left knee and with the right hand he was holding his mala akshimala in which he chant and he was actually not holding the mala mala is around his wrist and he is in the tarka mudra so by making this is called tarka mudra you know the first finger is bent and joined with the thumb so this is how he was sitting he also sometimes called jnana mudra on the pose of giving instruction or knowledge So now Brahma he comes there. Tam Brahma Nirvana Samadhi Mashritam Yupashritam Girisham Yoga Kaksham Saloka Pala Muniyo Manunam Adhyam Manam Pranjalaya Pranemu. So when they reached there, then all the Lokpalas, the protector of the directions, and the sages, they all paid obeisances to him and he was having this wooden stand on which he is keeping his right hand to support. Sometimes he may do that and then chant like that. So that is called Yoga Patta. So his hand was on the Yoga Patta. Bahum Prakoshthe Akshamalam Asinam Tarakundra. So Tam Brahma Nirvana Samadhi Mashritam. So he is Ekagrachit or in Samadhi. Means he is completely peaceful. Vipashritam Girisham Yoga Kaksham situated in the Yoga. So all these sages they went to him and they paid obeisances at his feet. Savyam Padapadmam Dakshina Uru Kritva Jananicha Savya Savyam Bahum Kritva Dakshina Bahu Prakoshtha Mani Bandhasthani Akshmalam Kritva Dakshina Pani Kritya Tark Mudri Aplakshita Masinam Taruktam Yoga Shastra Ekam Pada Ekas Mani so this pose is called Virasan and this is called Tarka Mudra. He is giving slokas. Tarjanya Mustra Ragre Mitha Sanyoja Changuli Prasariya Mandalam Brahms Tarka Mudra Ati Mantrika. Brahma Nirvana, he was enjoying the bliss of Brahman. Adhokshadalam Viha Subhatmana Sharirana Sansviti Chakra Shatanam. Tad Brahma Nirvana Sukho Vidur Vidha Iti Praladokya Radhokshara Alam Brahma Tatra Samadhi So although he was talking to them 
but he was in the state of samadhi means he was completely in bliss this is not the samadhi in which one loses awareness external awareness yog kaksham vam janu dridhi karnartham yog patam cha visheshan upasitam manu naam manan sila naam adhyam mukhyam so he is the chief of those who meditate विष्णु सो वन ही सॉ दैट ऑल दिस देवाज हैव कम देयर देन ही आल्सो सॉ दैट ब्रह्मा हैज कम सो व्हाट डिड ही डू ही स्टूड अप <laughs> he was in Samadhi and he stood up. Yes. And he was in Samadhi and Dr. came in and he did not stand up for that. <laughs> so he stood up and he gave his pranam to Brahma. So immediately. Although he was surrounded by all these sages, the Kumaras, Narada, and many other sages were around him, all these big people. so he stood up and he gave his pranam to brahma by lowering his head so sirsa bivandana maratam uthaya chakre sirsa he stood up and he lowered his head to brahma so he gives respect to brahma and when everybody has given their respect then brahma he will speak to him tatha pare siddha gana maharshi bhir ye vai samanta danu leela lohitam namaskrita prah shashank shekaram krita pranamam prah sannivatna ho so he said that just as lord vishnu he gives respect to their parents kashyapa when he came as vaman vaman avatar like that brahma he stood up and he respected and when he was doing this then all the sages they paid also respect to brahma when shiva was giving his respect to brahma then all narada kumaras everybody they they also gave respect to brahma because brahma is the father of all these people his father of brahma is father of kumaras is father of shiva and many other sages were there so when lord shiva was standing in the pose of giving respect to him he did not stop he is still standing like that then brahma speaks smiling because brahma is thinking that look now he is standing <laughs> if he would have stood up there and that shake him then all this problem would have been avoided so why he did not stand up there so he also must have in his mind something <laughs> He also wanted that this daksha should get a lesson. This must be planned. It was not just something which happened innocently, because it's very difficult to know the mind of Shiva, as Brahma already said, and the devas went that we cannot understand his mind. नाहम न यज्ञो न चयूय मन्ये ये देहा भाजो मुनियस चतत्वं विदु प्रमाणं बलवीर्ययोव यस्य आत्मतंत्रस्य के उपायं विदित सेद से आई इंद्र यू ऑल कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड सो सच अ पर्सन यू डोंट थिंक दैट ही वाज जस्ट सो सिंपल दैट ही वाज थिंकिंग ऑफ विष्णु एंड देयरफॉर ही डिड नॉट स्टैंड अप ही हैड दिस प्लान but obviously you cannot know the plan of this type of people what they want to do 
sono Brahma now speaks. So, and obviously Brahma has come. There is no question now that Shiva is going to not listen or not agree what he has to say. So, Brahma speaks, he doesn't speak very long. Brahma said that. जाने तोमीशम विश्वस्य जगतो योनि बीजय हो शक्ते शिवस्य च परम यत्तद ब्रह्म निरंतरम He said that O oh Dev I know you that you are the master of the whole universe and you are the supreme Brahman who is beyond this Prakriti which is the source of the universe so you are beyond all that. I know this. So Sri Vishnu says that Yadapi Tom Mam Pranamasi Tadapi Parmeshwarana Akyat Tav Ashwaryam Adhikam Iti Shav Matam Ashritya Jaina Janaiti. So if one says that why Brahma is speaking like this? So he says now Brahma is speaking with the opinion of the followers of Shiva. How the followers of Shiva consider Lord Shiva. This is not the ultimate opinion. But if you have to get some work done from somebody, then what do you do? You praise him. And you praise him to the hilt then the person feels happy then you do so he says that although you are giving obeisances to me but actually you are more than me why are you more than me? because you are one with the supreme lord parmeshwarena ekyat tav ashwaryam adhikam so this is the Vaishnava understanding of Shiva and Vaishnavas they don't consider Shiva to be the Supreme Lord but as a Vaishnava and this is described in Bhagavatam in many places there is no doubt about it there are many instances where it is shown that Vishnu is superior to Shiva but here it looks like as if he is the Supreme because he is making this statement that Shaktaya Shiva Sacha Param Yatta Di Brahma Nevedram that you are Brahma yourself. So why he is speaking? So therefore Vishnu Chakrati says that he is speaking as if he is a Shaivite, not as a Vaishnava. This is not the opinion of the Vaishnavas. Shaivaha Khalu Bhagavat Prakriti Purusham Sadasiv Rupatvena Manyante Tatashayamat. The Shaivites they consider that Lord Shiva, who has also no one form called Sada Shiva, so he is the personification of Prakriti and Purusha. Tvam Vishwasya Prakrita Prakrit Lakshnasya Sarvasya Isham Sada Shiva Rupam Dhan. There is one form of Lord Shiva which is Sada Shiva, and that form is a direct expansion of Krishna. So he is referring to that form when he is praying to Shiva. So he says that I know you to be the master of both material and spiritual manifestation. Yato jagataha prakrit prapanchasya yoni bijiyo param jani. Because you are superior to the material world. Yoni bijiyo kramena vinakti shakti sivasya chaiti. So you are the one who manifest here and yet tat prasiddham nirantaram nirbhedam brahma tadapi prameva jami and that famous brahman who is qualityless, formless that also are you. So it is also seen that those people who worship Shiva 
they all the worship him as having a form but their ultimate concept is that absolute reality is formless that she ultimately is formless so even if you study kashmir shaivism the worship she was form but they think that ultimately it is formless so that's why he says here that shakti sivasya cha param that you are beyond shakti the matter and shiva the purusha because you are brahman so this is the understanding of the shiva it's with that understanding he is speaking त्वमेव भगवन्ने तन शिव शक्तियो स्वरूपयो विश्व सृजसी पाश पाश्यसी क्रीडन ऊनपटो यथा से दैट इट इज यू ओनली हु क्रिएट हु मेंटेन एंड हु डिस्ट्रॉय दिस यू आर द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ बोथ प्रकृति एंड पुरुष मैटर एंड स्पिरिट सो इस डिस्क्राइब सिम एंड द सुप्रीम शिव शक्ति हो पुरुष प्रकृति हो स्वरूप हो स्वान शिवरूति पाठ है शिव से स्वान सत्वात सत्य तत्छा रूपत्वात तप समान हो तृतीयार्थ सृष्टि का अभ्यम विष्णु से सही और द कंप्लीट कॉज ऑफ एवरीथिंग द सुप्रीम कॉज ऑफ एवरीथिंग सो इन दिस वे ही इज प्रेम टू लॉर्ड शिवा Although Shiva is respecting him, so then we will read. He will speak more about Shiva. We will read that tomorrow. So today is Shivratri, and it is coincidence that we came to the prayers to Shiva on this auspicious day. महाशिवरात्रि एवरी मंथ इज शिवरात्रि कंप्लीट फास्ट इवनिंग टाइम Good. 
Guru. I mean, he's, he's meditating himself on the Lord, right? So yeah. then, it is also an example of how to... He showed himself that the Lord is superior than him. Yeah, so what is your question? I don't understand. And we can just, I mean, it's just an example. We can take it as an example. No, but it's, it's doing devotion to the devotee. Mm -hmm. This uh, Skanda Purana is mostly about the pastime of the Mojino? The Siv Purana. Oh. Siv Purana and Vayu Purana. The main story of Shiva. In the Skanda Purana there is one section where uh, Lord, uh, Shiva explains to Parvati uh, the Guru Gita. Mm. Which I just read a few days ago on the internet. <laughs> And there is also, there are many, uh, it's about the glories of the Guru, and there are many uh, shlokas which even we, we quote, like the Soma Gyana Timarandas, yeah. So why all these quotes are actually in this Purana, which is uh, for the humans in the mode of Tamas? And the Vaishnava, they're using also these quotes from there. It does not mean that everything is wrong. Hmm? It does not mean that everything is wrong in these Puranas. Mm -hmm. It's only that these Puranas, they try to uh, show the greatness of Shiva or Brahma or Ganesh. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that everything is just top -sitter. They try to show that they are very great people and you can worship them. They don't stress so much Vishnu. It's not that Vishnu is not glorified in them or there is no mention that Vishnu is God. No, that's not true. In this Purana is also speak that Vishnu is God and Vishnu is Supreme but along with that you will also find that Shiva is God and there are more stories of Shiva there. So that people become interested in that and they don't pay much attention to the Shiva's Vishnu part. In the so many stories of Vishnu and Skanda Purana mm -hmm. and Krishna. Shiva is an avatar of Krishna then? Guna avatar. Guna avatar. There are different types of avatars. Some are called Lila avatar. And some are called Guna avatar. You can and there is another type called Shakti Avesh Avatar. There are also Manvantar Avatar. So Guna Avatar means that he has a specific function for the creation, for the seniors, to look after the Guna of Tamas. So therefore he is called Guna Avatar. That's why he has the job of destruction. But this does not mean that he is not a devotee. So there are two ways that God manifests. One is that he manifests or he has an avatar when he is still having his own status as God. Another is that he may empower somebody to do some purpose and also he is called an avatar. But he is not God per se. So in that sense, Shiva is a Guna avatar, he is not the ultimate god. But when you see Vamana avatar or Narsimha or Lord Rama, then these are Vishnu himself. And Shiva is not Vishnu, but something lower than him. Therefore, we see him not as supreme god, but as a devotee of Nara, although he is an avatar. And is his position that of a post like Brahma, or is he...? It is a post, but he is also an eternal person. He does not change. No one can take his post. That's why he is more powerful than Brahma. And it was said. So, Brahma changes, but Shiva is Shiva all the time. So he was born then from the 
So, so the bottom first problem, what do we think of it in that way? Uh, bottom from anybody, just to manifest it. And like Krishna is born from his parents, Vasudev and Devaki. Just a Leela. Like you make a play on the stairs so you may appear from inside. Doesn't mean that you are born from that. Yeah. You existed also behind the curtain. Right? When you come on the stairs from this side, that side, you may also come from the rope from the top. So, now then they just manifest. Even we are. We take birth, it doesn't mean that we are created. As a soul we exist. So only the body is get assembled and then it grows. You mentioned that uh, there are two manifestations of Shiva. One that they derive from the north, and the other the Sada Shiva and Shiva. Yeah, so the Shiva is living in the Siddha Loka, in the spiritual world. Okay. And the Shiva world comes here in the material world. Okay. And then there are also like, also Brahma is there? Yeah. You see that? Mm, there is no Brahma. And the form is the same? Same. Yeah. That's why he's an avatar. So this from there. 